denial, who every day have been trained by us to recognize conflict and human rights violations. And they call us every single day and say, oh, there was a fight in the bar room last night, or you know, somebody's got a, 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 a tank parked out in front of a civilian home, and it looks like the neighbor's getting very testy with a soldier. We report this every day at noon to the Army of the Philippines, to the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, and to the monitoring team. And then we assemble a group of the relevant parties, including any one of our conflict resolution prevention trained people, civilians, local civilians, and we go out and make sure we do everything we can to solve that problem. And that's why you don't hear much about Mindanao in the news. Because even though they haven't signed any final agreement on how they're going to work out this autonomy, independence, or whatever question with the, with the Muslims, at least every little conflict that arises is dealt with the next day. So it doesn't become an opportunity for an armed party to intervene. So you just, and it's not that there isn't some armed conflict there. It's just that it's being managed while they solve the problem. And the way they're solving the problem is different from the way they've done it in the last hundred peace accords. Before, they would write a thousand pages and then on some day they would get together and sign it and then maybe somebody would discover some words were added at the end that was that sort of undermined the whole thing. They work out each little situation one by one. And then it's vetted by these awesome community groups. And the community groups I'm talking about are groups that were there before we came and are the ones who invited us. And the groups of people we've trained. We've trained a number of women peacekeeper teams. And they are setting the model. I was just in southern Thailand trying to see if any of those folks are interested in having that valid peace force there because they have the same issue there with the Muslims from Malaysia uh, in that tip of southern Thailand feeling like uh, we should have more say in things, and et cetera, et cetera. Yesterday, I got an email from the Rotary Group there, and they said, we decided we're going to apply for Rotary funds to have a women peacekeeper team. So now, they don't have any of our teams there, but we could do the training for them. And maybe if they had 60 women peacekeepers, they would think, well, maybe we need unarmed civilian peacekeeper here. What we're learning, though, is local people can do a very good job in protecting communities. But, you know, you, you, you have to have the courage. And part of that courage comes from knowing what the rules are, seeing other people do it, having some successes, and, and I guess knowing that you're not going to win every time. So that's been really excellent. Tell me how I'm doing on time. Where is my timekeeper? Uh, well, you're fine. Okay. So if you want to look at our website, and we have some really extraordinary things going on in South Sudan besides um, reintegrating child soldiers. We are bringing together tribal groups and helping them solve conflicts. We all have some same ancestral memory of the cattle keepers and the farmers. Well, that's going on every day. When it gets dry, the cattle keepers come and they just bring 5,000 head of cattle on your backyard. And you know, frankly, I'd be pissed about that too. So, it's not all one-sided either. Some of the people in the agricultural villages go out and attack those guys. And so, there is enough blame to go around for everybody. And what we're doing is try to institute some rules. So now they have to knock on the door and say, may we have permission to graze our cattle? Rather than just bringing 5,000 head of cattle into, you know, little bulbs, okay? 
a, a good idea. That's not completely solved the problem, but they're talking. So and I don't have too much to add about South Caucasus. I do know that we're we're having some of the some of the issues of getting across the border that other people have. That just means we need more and more opportunities uh, for trust. So let me say one thing to you that I've discovered in the last year is that Rotary Clubs are they've been existing for a hundred years. How many of you know anybody in Rotary or is anybody in Rotary? Rotary clubs have been around for 100 years. They have 34,000 clubs, 1.2 million members. And their goal is international peace and friendship. You know, we really ought to get to know these folks. Because they don't know about you either. And as I'm traveling, I'm trying to hook people together. The good thing about Rotary is they have money. They raise money at the Rotary Club level. So imagine this little peacekeeping thing in Southern Thailand. They have to raise money in Southern Thailand, but maybe my Rotary Club in St. Paul will raise some money. Then, because they have now taken on this armed conflict as a focus area, now their district will match it, and Rotary International will match it. So you got six Rotary Clubs. You might have $50,000, $60,000 to do some training or provide a vehicle or whatever. So I'm saying to you, if you want to make your money go far, get your local Rotary Club to use its new focus area, a conflict resolution and prevention, to do a project such as training for women peacekeepers in Southern Thailand. Now it has to be initiated in the area where it's the problem. They have to make a commitment. And then any Rotary around the world, any of those 34,000 clubs can raise 100 bucks. You know, even that's a lot of money. Matched by their district, matched by Rotary International. The money that you would put into a fundraiser all gets matched. Isn't that a fantastic discovery? So anyway, another peace group that I find doesn't cross over with the mainstream peace movement is serve us. It's an international host traveler organization and I've been a member for 25 years. And these people are all dedicated to peace. They Welcome just don't have a platform. U.S. serve us. Serve us. It's an international group. There's a U.S. group. So you travel. You can have a host. There's no charge. And you can also be a host. But they have peace goals too. And so there are serve us hosts in every community, and they're always serve us travelers going through. So if you can figure out a way to bring them into your discussions and your events, that's one more group that knows what you're doing. So anyway, I've run over my time, so yeah. Um, I think most people got a DVD, but if you have any more, you might want to ask if anybody didn't get one. Yeah, anybody not get a DVD? I have some more here, so please ask. Uh, any quick questions? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm wondering about language barriers. Ah, good question. Yes, language barriers. We do we do a little language training, but you you can't just train peace, peacekeepers and and uh, you know some Mindanao language because a lot of people speak four languages in their hometown. We hire national peacekeepers, and they are great. They do the translation. They do those cultural sensitivity. So even people like me, I speak Spanish, but you know I might get the wrong word for love, and I would just be in really big trouble. So yes, an excellent question. We rely on our local translators. They're there in the country. They're all trained as peacekeepers, so they're there when we leave. Are you doing any work in our country? Uh, we do not presently. There's no reason why we couldn't. Okay, we, yes. we, need an invitation. we need an invitation and an exploration. But there is one group that's already doing it, our partner, Ceasefire, working in Chicago and in other communities. And they have a very different focus, though. They're, they know gangs, criminal structures that are driving this, this gang thing. And so when they hire people, they go to the prisons 
and they recruit people who have an influence on this or that game. So they've been very successful. And when they work, they're working in Iraq, and they only use national folks. So we we work with them, we support them, you know, we celebrate them. Uh, anybody who's doing unarmed civilian peacekeeping, we we are here to make it the way we do business. <clears throat> so although we think we we have a, a great idea and a great program, we would love for you to support us. <clears throat> There are some other groups who, who are doing this, and we're very happy about this. We've been working at the UN also to get the UN to, well, the UN is supporting us in South Sudan. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.